Hey guys, Mark here. I am at Simpson River. This is a new place for me entirely. As far as I know, I don't even think I've been down that highway before. And all I can say is fires, fires, fires. This is Fire Valley, I swear to God. Everything has been consumed by fire sometime in the last 20 years. It's like, wow. All right, I'm here. Planning to come up here, and this is a fat question mark. I cannot find anything about this. Not a thing. Go try punching Scout Camp into the internet and try and find anything meaningful. All you get is, you know, probably like put on, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, scope. Yeah, I mean, I've tried putting Upper Simpson River in here. All I get is a bunch of descriptions of this. Anyway, I want to do this loop. All right? I can't believe I can't find anything on this. There's no beta at all. That's just, hasn't anyone thought of doing this before? Like, I can't be the first one. I really can't. So... Yeah, anyway, today it is just up the Simpson River Trail into Surprise Creek Campground. Okay. Not sure why there's a trail that goes down here and some hitching posts, but there's a question for another day. First thing I gotta do is cross a big bridge. Warrior from fires. Oh, well, yeah, that'll. Explains a few things, doesn't it? All right. Oh, I see. You want to take horses, you got to go down there and cross. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Over there, it gets all nice and wide. That would be that trail. We've got a bit of an interpretive trail here. Like doing that when there's a fire they will go and make an interpretive trail that's all right because it has them at least keep that nice and clear right gives the, the front country tourists a little something to go hike through i know very little about this like i said so this in front of me is kind of intimidating but apparently the first my day today is really not much elevation change. All right, let's talk a little bit of safety. Know like yourself, know your gear, know the trail. Let's talk about the gear. So, for the second hike, now I have my trail runners. I wore them on the uh, my last backpack and it worked out, I think, pretty well. I also have adopted a uh, Starbucks takeout mug. Uh, I got the idea from a guy at Badger Creek. The only, I think he said it was 86 grams. And it's nice to, like I make my oatmeal and then I have to, like I eat it obviously, then I have to wash the thing and it's a pain to wash uh, the jet boil after oatmeal and then I make coffee. But after you wash, after you make coffee, it's easy to wash the jet boil so coffee first dump it in the to-go mug well i can just wash with just a little bit of water after that now i make oatmeal now i have both i think it'll be a nice addition and for only 86 grams and cost me eight bucks at starbucks to buy one it works okay i think i've seen you've seen enough of my mug for a little bit know yourself i am uh, getting beaten down this summer i am backpacking as much as i can and it's taking its toll on my body and uh, the mental you know the emotional so it has not been that long since i did you know 75 kilometers on the uh, sawback now here i am i'm out again and I got a big one now planned for the end of the end of August. So after this one, it'll be 10 days. 
but I had to drag myself. I almost dumped. I almost didn't do this last minute. I almost said, no, I'm just going to sit and stare at Netflix for a few days. But I dragged myself out. And, uh, you know, I'll be happy once I get on this trail here and start doing my thing. But, yeah, it's uh, I'm pushing myself a little bit. You know, I'm backpacking and backpacking and backpacking. I'm doing a lot this summer. The trail, well, obviously, I've been talking about it a lot already. I mean, just going this way, you turn and follow the highway for a bit. I was already whipping on my map. And, you know, like, this is intimidating. Where do I go? It's not up there. I think I go around this guy. This is Mount Shanks. According to the map and according to an all trails track I managed to get for Simpson River. So I feel better now that I'm supposed to be going this way until I reach the river especially and then it's gotta go around that guy. So yeah at least uh, for today but I'm, obviously I'm feeling a lot more intrepidation than normal. It also doesn't help that this is the first time I've taken even a single solitary step of hiking in Kootenai National Park. Stupid phone shut off just as I was <laughs> trying to cross that. One thing about the forest fire is it has left this nice and open. I mean, I can imagine this was just forced, a forest walk before, but it won't last forever, but I mean, up there, it will it will last a long, long time. It'll take forever for stuff to grow back up there. Down here, though, you know, it'll become a forest again soon. Well, not soon, 10, 20 years. It's the Simpson River. Down there, the one I crossed was uh, Vermilion. And then this guy goes and joins up. A bit of climbing, but you can see it ends very quickly. I was all ready to take a break overlooking this river. And then I saw the best break spot ever. Oh man, these chairs are so nice. Oh yeah. This is insane. Why is this valley so massively prone to fire? A sea of purple. It's kind of interesting. You got a little walkway here. I think it's because there's like thistle and other stuff that will poke you in the legs if you walk through the normal trail. Because there's no water. Look at all this. It keeps going for it keeps going for a bit. And while you're here it's okay, while you're here there's water. So I have a silly confession to make for your benefit. I kept looking up scout camp, scout, scout, scout. I just realized in the damn car, it is scout with a P. Maybe there is beta on the scout camp. I don't know, what a weird name. Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna be your beta. Pretty much. I'm probably the best beta you'll get. My uh, attempt, whatever's gonna come up here. We'll see what happens. One thing that makes me a bit nervous about this is I don't have any leeway. I have five days off and I have a five day. And so I need to get through that difficult section in one day. If I don't, something goes wrong. Well, I'll have to make some decisions. I should mention too that I sent an email to Mount Assiniboine Provincial Park asking about this. I did say scout camp. Maybe that's why they didn't 
say anything back. Anyway, I got nothing. So, yeah. The trail is over there. I decided to come off it to get a nice spot for a break. Now it's pretty obvious where you're going. I thought the highway went up here, but it doesn't. It goes down there. Well, every time I read something about this trail, I said expect blowdowns. Fact is that most of the things from the fire that would blow down on this trail, they're gone and they've been cleared. What's happening now is you're getting stuff like this that for some reason likes to grow right alongside the trail. I mean, it's not in very many places, but it's along the trail. And that's starting to be something that you have to brush through a lot, but that is nothing really. Small potatoes. Hopefully at some point they'll start coming and clearing out some of that, but I don't know. I don't know how well Kootenai National Park takes care of stuff like this. I mean, I know nothing about that park, so. Well, this is certainly becoming very clear. There's where I'm going, and tomorrow I'm gonna go up to the left. I'm already thinking if I had an extra day, I would go up Farrell Pass, go through Assiniboine, do all that first, and then come down the unknown trail, downhill, which would probably be better. But I also, that also leaves me no option to turn back. I have to get through, or I'm literally late for work, right? I'm not showing up back in the real world in time. So I gotta try tomorrow, day two, and the option to turn back is there. You gotta, you gotta keep that safety going on for that, right? There's gotta be an option to turn back. Really hasn't been much of this. I haven't really been down to the river a long time. And this is probably the first good water source in five kilometers. Okay then, look at this bad boy. I think I'll be able to do it without too much trouble. Wow, that would be a lot safer. <laughs> yeah, falling off that, I don't think that would happen, but yeah, you know, it would still really suck. There you go. That is pretty. Right now, anyway, it doesn't look like it'd be that hard to go and explore up that guy. But uh, who knows? We'd have to go down and cross, uh, cross Simpson River down there. Random backpacking thought. So you would think that some animals will be caught in the path of these forest fires and die. Bear, deer, elk, whatever. Forest fires move fast. Um, and the trail, I mean, they use our trails. I mean, it's the easiest way to get around the bush. So why not use them, right? It expends the least amount of energy, helps the rate of survival. But on all the trails I've done that have gone through old forest fire, I have never found a pile of bones on the trail, never. So, Makes you think that bears and elk and deer and moose know how to escape forest fires just fine. It's just serene, isn't it? A little bit of climbing. Very open and pretty all day. I'm glad that I'm doing this twice. You know, I'm coming back out this way too. Such a nice walk. That's always a bit of a, climbs up that ridge and then right back down 
almost beside the river again. It's what they call a pointless up and down. Well, it's nice down here. This was nice before, but now it's just delightful. You're just down beside this river and it doesn't come and flood things. You can see maybe it did once, but uh, right now it isn't. And uh, it's just nice, you know. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah, this came down here. So sometimes it does flood the trail a little bit. Well, this is kind of interesting. Look at the trees here. All busted over that way. Did the ice come up here and start smashing everything? Interesting. Another thing, I think I've lost a trail, at least temporarily. I think I saw, you know, you can see here, there's plenty of open space and stuff, but I feel like it went sneaking over here. I kind of saw it. Yeah, there's a log. Oh yeah, see, there's kind of a log here for when it's muddy. Yeah, there it is. Like, look, doesn't that look like the trail? It really does. Jesus. Classic case of overconfidence. I slipped and fell crossing this. I think that there, that snapped. So I stepped on it. I got my foot in the water. Had a scrape on my leg, kind of went down here. Got that one on the water a little bit too. How stupid, oh my God. Like, that's ridiculous. All right, what's going on in here? Uh, okay, not so bad. <laughs> For God's sakes. <laughs> How many kilometers have I done and I haven't had a, like, uh, yeah, I've crossed about 6,000 of those things. What the hell? Well, the fire definitely came through by the river down here, but because there's water, in the ground and probably some of the humidity in the air it is growing in here much faster yeah makes you wonder if it's just gonna keep spreading and that's how things are honestly gonna regrow i mean otherwise it's gonna take 50 years up in some of those areas but it's just nice just slightly uphill i barely even notice flat almost I mean, obviously it's going uphill a little bit and I'm walking beside a river and I'm walking up river, but it's just nice. Not bad, man. There we go. Not bad at all. something you don't see very often. This is an old bridge or just a walkway or something. It burned. I don't know if I've ever seen a bridge, a half like a burned out bridge before. Ugh. All right, now to Cinnaboyne. Officially now I've gone 8.8 .8 kilometers. At least according to the map, anyway, this thing screws me out of point eight. Two kilometers left. Well, it's this part of the trail where you're gonna get a bunch of blowdowns. You can see that there's already something that's been tramped down around it here. But there's also plenty of evidence that there has been chainsaw work done coming through here, so. People are, you know, someone's out taking care of it. Oh boy, yeah, this is a big blowdown. Well, I was looking at this earlier thinking this was a uh, federal pass, but now it seems to be uh, Indian Creek. Look at this up here. So that one little section was, uh, you know, it was spared, forest fire. 
A little bit up here too. Hmm. More a nice river view, is that's for sure. Well, who says this area is ignored? They built a brand new bridge down there. One of them washed out. It took them three or four years, but they built one. I guess at the same time, they decided to come and put in a few things like this. It's, it's quite nice. Okay. I can see the campground. There's a few things going on down here. There's trails taken off in a few directions. I can cross or I can go down to the bridge. Apparently those are two different places. So I definitely want to find the bridge. So you do have a sign up here saying, located new bridge, 200 meters. Well, I know exactly what this is. It's the hiker trail. I'm gonna go walk up it a little bit. See what it looks like. It's not the easiest thing ever to follow, but look, somebody is, somebody did come up this trail and saw some things out. So that gives me encouragement for this trail. Well, I think they tried to make a 40 year bridge here. I hope that succeeded. They even cut down a whole bunch of trees that may have fallen on the bridge. So if you want some firewood, you don't mind carrying it over to camp. Look over here, right? They left it for you. Oh, more there. Oh yeah, metal and treated and now this is not a typical backcountry bridge. Wow. This is swank.